My interview with Nikki of Transport Evolved is coming up next. And as always, it's a great conversation. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and that way you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, this is me and Nikki about a week ago at CES before the Bytons uh, press conference, a brand that both of us, I think, uh, kind of like. I don't want to speak for herself. I do. Uh, Nikki has an awesome channel called Transport Evolved. Um, and if you guys haven't seen it, you, you must. Uh, I kind of feel like we're sister channels here. My interview on her channel is already there. And I think it's one of like the best discussions I've had in a long time and definitely on camera. Um, and uh, this time we, you know, met at CES once again and uh, talked about, you know, what, what's happening this year. This is an exciting year. Uh, last year was an exciting year. There's still some, you know, interesting news. Now, me and her don't always agree on stuff, but she always has a great educated opinion that I respect. Um, and, and it's always fun to talk to her. Uh, by the way, thank you to her crew. This video was taped with their cameras because we're already doing an interview for me being on her show. And it was just easier to keep the camera and the lights rolling instead of doing the whole new setup. So thank you um, to their crew uh, for, for basically letting me use their, their equipment uh, for the interview. Now, uh, before I'm actually we moved, you know, forward with that, just want to tell you guys that this show and this channel is sponsored by Starman Gifts, the home of the adventures of Starman, the comic book that I have right here. And I'm sure you've heard about this before. If you don't have a copy, check it out. There's a link in the description of this video, but also a discount code. So check it out. There are a lot of other cool things that they sell on that website and the discount code is good for all of it. All right, guys, without further ado, I just want to um, um, welcome. Well, we, we pre-taped it, obviously, but without further ado, here's my interview with Nikki of Transport Evolved. It's great to see you again. Great to see you too, Alex. So Always a pleasure. It is. And, and, and we're at CES once again, a year later, long year. It's been a really long year, actually. It's been, it's been really crazy in terms of the number of cars that we've seen come to market. But it's also been a crazy year in so much as 2019 is very different to 2018. So 2018 was the year of the long range electric car from many, many more car companies than we've seen before. Some great battery breakthroughs, talk about battery breakthroughs things that might be coming down the pipeline in the future, OEMs throwing lots and lots of money at electrification and electric vehicles. Obviously there's two differentiations there. But this year at CES, you really have to work hard to find an electric car, about the same hardness to find a hydrogen fuel cell car. And it's all been about autonomous. Yeah. You know, first of all, you know what I like about interviewing you is I don't even have to ask a question. You already gave me an answer. Actually, that was what I was going to ask. You know, uh, best and worst of 2018. What what do you think was the highlight? And you can pick a couple if you want. And and what do you think were the, the worst moments of 2018 for our electric car industry? So I think probably we we can't avoid talking about Tesla's successes in Q3. Turning a profit was a big thing for Tesla. Q4 hopefully will be the same. And Tesla getting so many Model 3s out is an astonishing achievement. I think Tesla needs to be applauded and lauded for that. I do have some concerns about the quality of some of the vehicles coming out. And I've also heard some stories from people that have had cars where some of the old problems in terms of panel gaps and build quality and people taking deliveries of cars with chips and scratches and knocks and things that you shouldn't be taking a delivery of a car on show me that Tesla's really balls to the wall and that worries me about that success. So generally it's great news, but I do have concerns that down the road Tesla may pay for it. My worst thing of the year probably is all of the companies that are coming to market with long range cars that don't seem to understand that they need to be sold like every other car on the market. So we know that Hyundai is being a bit cautious about the rollout of the Kona electric. Yeah. We know that Kia is being even more cautious about the e-Nero rollout. And a Soul EV. And the Soul EV. And there are so many people who watch both of our channels, I think, who live in parts of the world that wouldn't be considered key mass adoption markets. And they want to own one of these cars as well. So that is 
maybe one of the the lower parts of the year for me. Interesting. Agree on you for the success. I also don't think that the worst story of the year also belongs to Tesla and Elon Musk and his tweets. So, but I, I agree with you as well. I, I, it is concerning that we're seeing these great cars coming out, uh, but they're limited, right? Almost like they don't really want to make them. So, I, I, I agree. Okay, well now that we're here, we're seeing something a little bit different, right? Compared to the rest of the year. What do you think is happening this year? What, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the successful 2019 looks like for our community? I think we've got to see an expansion in battery production. We've got to see battery production become a lot more cost effective for the industry. And I think we've also got to see battery companies and tier one part suppliers and automakers all step up to ensure that the battery materials that they are using are responsibly sourced, that they are using as lower carbon impact as possible when mining the materials used in those batteries, refining them and putting them in the car and stepping up to have a more accountable and equitable future. That's what I hope we'll see this year. Because I think it's fair to say that electric vehicles are here to stay now. But what we need to see moving forwards is electric vehicles that are here to stay and for everyone. 2018, before that point, electric vehicles were for the middle class and above. And we still are waiting for that mass market affordable electric car than everyone, that everyone can afford. And the Tesla Model 3 isn't it. Not yet, at least. Well, even at 35 grand, it's not yet affordable. You know, I, I, I have people who I'm good friends with who have never owned a car that cost them more than 25 grand because they can't afford a car that's over 25 grand. We're gonna see the incentives roll back this year, especially if our current president has his way. And so we need to see affordable cars globally become far more, far more, um, far more accessible to a wider population. I agree. A, a bit in defense of the Model 3 that hopefully is going to be at 35,000. I mean, there, there are still countries and there is still, you know, EV credit here that will make it under 30, right? And I feel like under 30 is there, meaning you know, especially if you lease the car, and also you know, we're talking about used car market, right? Another two or three years, you know, Model 3s will be under 20 at some point, right? So, well, I, this I, is the thing. So, uh, I had this conversation earlier today actually with, with my crew. We were talking about used electric cars, and there are some used electric cars that you just don't want to buy, right? I mean, right. our very own K1 Elliot has had a nightmare with her BMW i3 Rex. Now, she's lucky because she's got an extended warranty on that car. But without that extended warranty, she'd be in, in deep doo-doo. And I do not believe that Tesla is in a place yet where it can offer customers of used second-hand cars, whether they are Model S's, X's or 3's, a good, affordable repair, sort of repair line. Because if, if something breaks on a car, on a Tesla, the repair bill is astronomical in a lot of places, tell me, right? That's actually one of the reasons I am leaving the brand is because of the repair time. I mean, I don't even want to get into it, but point well taken. I, 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 I think that just like I said, when there are incentives that are about $10,000 and it makes Model 3 at $25,000, I feel like it's kind of within affordable because, you know, don't forget, they, you know, you, you get that car, but you also save a lot on, you know, obviously gas and oil changes, whatever the hell those guys do, I, I forget. Uh, so, uh, but you're right. You know, but, but I absolutely agree. We definitely need to get some of the electric cars that everybody can afford, and and, the, and when they do become used cars, they are still viable. They still have the right range, and and, and so forth. So, completely agree. Um, well, let's let's go by topic because there are a couple of things that happened here, you know, uh, recently. So Nissan Leaf uh, came up with a longer range battery, but one thing and we talked about it before we started, right? One thing they, 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 that everybody kind of wanted them to do, which is active cooling system, which has caused so many, so much bad publicity to them, um, they, they, they still admitted that. What are your thoughts on that? I think well, we're gonna find out, right? We need to wait and find out. Nissan thinks it's got it solved. I wouldn't advise anybody buy a Nissan Leaf until we know for sure that that's been fixed, but we don't know if it's been fixed yet. We, we don't know because we don't have the information to make that decision. And we can be speculative about it, 
but at the same point we won't know until people actually own these cars and drive them. Fair enough. I, I, I agree. Uh, let, let's talk about startups. Um, Neo, Byton, a few other ones. You know, some of them are making really good strides. Uh, is there a particular one or two manufacturers that are brand new that you really think are going to make it and, and, and come up with a good enough product in production in the next couple of years um, that will really compete with the legacy manufacturers when they catch up? And of course, Tesla. It's hard to say what the impact of Chinese manufacturing is going to be. Chinese manufacturing has got a lot better over the last decade. I mean, I remember when Chinese manufacturing was a joke. These days, no. Chinese manufacturing is on par with a lot of other manufacturing processes. And I think if these companies can do what they say, bring the product to market for the price in the way they want it, then we're going to be okay. But if we don't see those vehicles coming to market and they're more Faraday futures, we're in trouble. All right, last question. Um, what do you predict uh, this year for Tesla um, and, and uh, the, the, the brands that are legacy manufacturers like you know Kia and Hyundai and some of the startups like Byton, Neo, and so forth? Byton is going to struggle to stick to its production schedule. I think the same is true for Neo. Although Neo is further down the field and it is bringing cars to market, but I think Neo is going to struggle meeting US standards and European standards. At the same point, I think Tesla is going to have a turbulent year because Tesla's reduced the price of the Model S, X and 3 to account for those dropping federal tax credits. And it's going to be difficult to make that happen. I also think that legacy automakers are going to follow one of two different paths. Either they're going to bring these cars to market and we're going to have a success, or we're going to see more of the same. Audi is already struggling to bring the e-tron to market on time. It seems genuine about it. And I believe that all the legacy automakers who are saying they are bringing cars to market are genuine. You don't invest several hundred million dollars in changing your facilities. You don't invest several hundred million dollars in designing a new platform and new drivetrains and new battery solutions if you are just secretly trying to kill the electric car. Wow, right. Listen, I, as, as always, we can talk forever, but um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I can't wait for the next conversation. Um, and um, yeah, see you next time. Take care, Alex. All right, unfortunately, we had a very short amount of time. And of course, I would have loved to keep talking to her. And I'm sure we could have talked for a really, really long time. Uh, check out my interview on her channel, which I was longer. And it uh, was also a, a pretty cool discussion. I'm hoping to uh, have many more. Uh, definitely check out her channel, Transport Evolved. Um, I, again, I, I, I really, really like what she's doing there. And they've been growing so, so fast lately. So that's it's really, really awesome. And also, give me, let me give a uh, give a shout out to one of my new Patreons, Seth McLean. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon community. Um, patreoncom slash e 4 electric is where you can uh, join uh, in a top tier. You can uh, watch all of these videos live, so be the first one uh, to actually watch before anybody else. Um, and of course, thank you for supporting me, uh, the full-time independent YouTuber in the electric car space. Without your help, it would definitely be much, much harder. All right, I, that's it for now. I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.